Hello everyone and welcome to Doom Productions. We make feature films and videos about filmmaking. I'm Jordan and today we're going to be talking about the music for our new film, The Bell Rings. Today I have a question for you. Mm, what would be your perfect heaven? What would be heaven to you? So if you're new to our channel and you haven't seen The Bell Rings yet, please go check it out. Then come back here and watch this video on how I made the score. Before we get into the kind of artistic things about the Bell Ring score, I wanted to share a little story for you all. If you've followed this channel before, you know my process for how I make music for our movies. But if you haven't heard before, I'll go over it briefly. What I first do when I start thinking about ideas for music is I will make a project file. I'll make um, an expanded track, if you will. I'll make, uh, I'll come up with the idea for a theme and I'll put it in GarageBand and I'll play around with it. I'll do lots of different variations of it and I'll effectively make what I like to call a master track of that theme. That's where all the different variations are in this track. That's where all the different um, ideas I have for this melody are in this track. And I say track, but I really mean a project file. Master project file, I guess that's a better word. Um, and so, it's no different for the bell rings when I came to do the score. What I did was I came up with a good handful of different ideas for themes and characters and moments, and I had a bunch of project files I had created for the bell ring score. Now, what's interesting about this one is usually um, I will start coming up with music midway through shooting or maybe near the end of shooting because I was acting in this one, it was a little bit different. So what had happened was I started creating themes for the bell rings before shooting even began as early as, gee, maybe um, May of 2021. So over a year ago, almost about a year and a half, I would say. And so for the bell rings, as I would come up with ideas for music, I would just slowly create these project files. And this took place from about, as I said, May of 2021 to about the last theme, which was probably about um, October of 2021. So I know the movie just came out, but I've been sitting on this music for a very long time, these themes and these ideas. Um, I would send Ethan demo files for the music for the bell rings so he could use them as temp tracks if he so wished. And, you know, I've been sitting on this for a long time. And when it came time to do the, the final actual score, there's an interesting story there because generally how I like to work is I'll have my temp tracks created or my demos or, or master files or whatever you want to call it. And then as I start to picture lock, as I lock the picture, or I guess in this case, as Ethan starts to lock the picture, um, I'll go back into those master files, duplicate them, and then I will alter the duplicated file so it fits the tone or the moment of the scene where it will be dropped. And anytime I use a theme, that's what I do. I'll duplicate it alter the theme to fit the scene, and I'll drop it in the timeline for the editing. Or in this case, I kind of had my own separate timeline from Ethan, but that's a whole nother story, not really important. Effectively, uh, Ethan locked the picture roughly, um, I believe it was two weeks before the film came out. And so what he did was he wanted me to do the music, and I was going on a trip at the time which left me only seven days to do the music. And so he gave me the copy of the bell rings seven days before I leave for my trip. And I'm like, great, I watch it. It was awesome, it was cool. And then I open up my garage band to look at those master files, those master project files to create the music. And what do you know? They're nowhere to be found. Um, I looked everywhere. I looked at my computer. I looked at my phone, I looked in my iCloud, I looked everywhere, my trash bins, my map, all of my demos, with the exception of two, were completely gone for the bell rings. Everything I've created, all the cues I had made, all the uh, melodies I had explored in these different project files was completely gone. And so I found this out seven days before I had to turn the score in for the bell rings which um, I'm sure, as you can imagine, was a little bit stressful, just a little bit. Um, and, you know, short story, long story short, I was able to finish the score for the bell rings within seven days. But man, 
It was very stressful, very exciting to do it. Now, I had the benefit of having already created all the master files. I already had the melodies in my head. I remembered them. It was just a pain in the butt to recreate all those melodies and score the movie um, that way. It was just a little more work. Um, but yeah, the whole, you know, now there's not music to music the entire way through, but you know, that whole hour and 40 minute movie, I had to do all that in a week, which is um, crazy, chaotic, a little bit wild, but exciting. It was probably one of the more challenging uh, musical aspects of filmmaking I've ever had to do before. Because as I said, um, I've never had to <laughs> score an entire movie uh, in a week before. But that's a little interesting story about the bell rings music. Um, so just so you know, everything, everything that you hear in the movie, all the music in it was done in seven days. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. But interesting story aside, let's jump into the themes for the bell rings. So there are four themes that I wanted to talk about that appear in the bell rings. These are four pieces of music that I thought were worth drawing attention to, that I think are worth um, looking at in terms of how I use them throughout the movie and how they appear, and just getting any folks who aren't composers to start thinking like a composer when it comes to using uh, music in their movies, or whether that be original music or just using copyrighted already pre-recorded music for their movies and start thinking about how they can use variations and and use music in a new way as a new tool so the first theme i wanted to focus on was the uh the main theme for the bell that appears in act one now the bell in the bell rings has a couple of different themes and the first theme this is the first theme that i came up with um the first one primarily appears in act one it was influenced slightly by the Davy Jones themes in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Also, D Philip Glass. If you, if you know me, you know I'm a big Philip Glass fan and his music. Um, and I wanted to create something that started out obviously melodic and had a repetitive melody that was running throughout the entire thing, but also could kind of function as a lullaby that slowly ramped it into a more ritualistic theme. You know, in, in the movie, I think you might know, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about, but there's a moment halfway right through, right before the act break of act one, where my character does something pretty pretty drastic, pretty, pretty wild, and I wanted a theme that would, again, start off very calmly, very quietly, but then ramp up into something very violent, ritualistic, almost feel like an initiation into a cult of sorts for my character. And so, Prior to that moment, I knew everything had to build up to that moment. And to make that moment hit better, I wanted to have smaller, quieter versions of that theme appear in the first part of the movie. So you usually hear this theme when James and Mary are together. You hear hints of it in other places. Sometimes it plays through the full melody. Sometimes it just plays a couple of notes from that melody. So you don't quite get the full resolution that you uh, do with the full version of the theme. Um, the way I kind of looked at it is that the character, the, the music, the bell is a character in this movie and it didn't speak obviously. And it would be kind of ridiculous to have the bell just going ding, ding, ding all over and over. That would be kind of like, you know, it would just sound like, uh, the Salamanca guy in Breaking Bad. But I, I looked at the music as a way to, of, uh, communicating the bell's voice. So when the bell or by a, another extension, Mary, when they're at work, that's when you hear that first theme or just any of these themes for the bell in general. But in the first act in particular, when you hear that theme um, for the bell, that's when the bell is at work. And what's that, that, that theme appears in the first half of the movie and it doesn't really appear in the second half except for the very end when, Jane, when Peter is carrying James into the field. What's interesting there is it's not playing the bell's theme 
with the glockenspiel or xylophone at all, or piano, it's playing the theme with stringed instruments through violin and, and other various stringed instruments. I associated strings with the brother characters and I associated the percussion, you know, xylophone, glockenspiel sound with the bell. And so what I kind of, when you look at that scene where Peter is carrying James, you're hearing the bells theme played with the brother's instruments. And I did that because um, it's, it's using the instrumentation, the brother's instrumentation to illustrate how the bell has corrupted them. Because those stringed instruments, again, those belong to the brothers. But if it's playing the music of the bell, that shows that the bell has corrupted the familial relationship. So the second theme for the bell that I wrote appears primarily in the second act. In fact, it doesn't even appear in the first act whatsoever. Uh, again, some of the influences on this one is again, Davy Jones' theme in, in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Philip Glass, Glass obviously, but also uh, Interstellar. Um, there's a lot of beautiful organs that are uh, played throughout that soundtrack and I really wanted something that felt um, almost religious something that evoked the sense of standing in a grand cathedral, but also having an apocalyptic feeling to it as well. That was something that I thought was really important because is that first theme goes so big in the first act, you need something that's just as big, if not bigger, in the second act for the final climax of the movie. And so you hear it primarily in the second half as James becomes more and more possessed by the bell. I looked at it as that first theme is the initial invitation, invitation to James to, you know, use the bell. But once he uses it to kill Robert, now the bell has kind of a hold on him and now it starts speaking to him differently. The tone starts changing a little bit. The, it's singing a different song a little bit. So you hear it subtly in quieter scenes with James and Mary, again, to show that Mary and the bell are at work. But I wanted something that hinted at the doom that was, pun unintended, that hinted at the doom that was to come in the climax of the movie. Something can get big. So that's where you hear lots of, there's a lot more drums in this theme. There's a lot more kind of uh, staccato kind of noises and notes in this theme. Uh, it, and it was ultimately something that, similar to the first one, it was something that you could play under a quiet scene, but could have the potential to ramp up to a big explosive climax. Doesn't sound like a loving brother to me. You know who that sounds like? That sounds like him. And you know what we have to do with people like him. I can't. You did everything. So the third theme that I wrote for The Bell Rings was, I guess for lack of a better term, I would call this the main theme. You only hear this theme three times throughout the movie. You hear it once during the opening credits, you hear it during the intermission, and you also hear it after James makes the decision to kill his brother. And if The Bell Rings was a long series of movies, I would consider this kind of the main theme of the series. It's kind of, look at it like the Star Wars fanfare, although musically has nothing in common with the Star Wars fanfare. But um, the other themes are really more about James. The other two themes that I talked about, they're about how the bell communicates to James. Um, in act one, you have the bell seducing James really. And then in act two, you have the bell um, possessing James and taking control over him. So they're really about, although they're about James's relationship to the bell, they're not really about just the bell. I wanted a theme that was purely belonged to the bell. And the only place you could really put that in a movie like this is during the opening credits, the intermission. And I used it when, once James makes the unforgivable decision to murder his brother, I used it there to show that this bell has a hold of him, has true control over James. He's given his soul over to this thing. 
Um, and that's, that's a moment musically when everything kind of not comes full circle, but that third use of this theme was important to show how far James had come again, because he no longer, the bell's no longer speaking to him in different melodies. The spell, the bell is speaking to him through its own melody. It's saying, this is my theme, here I am, you are mine, and now we are one in the same. We're interconnected throughout the history of time or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure if the bell rings will be a series or, you know, the whole mythology of it all necessarily, it, and I don't want to reveal it all, but um, the way to look at this theme that appears is this, it would be the theme for the bell, exclusively the bell, and if it was a series, it would belong to the series. last piece of music I wanted to talk about doesn't actually appear in the Bell Rings movie at all. It appears in the end credits of the movie. So it's something we just called the witch's song in the movie. It's a, it's a um, song that you hear sung by Bellamy Sharp, who plays Mary in the movie during the end credits. In earlier drafts of the Bell Rings script, Ethan references Mary singing James a song, a lullaby of sorts. And for that, he wanted to look into finding old kind of folk music, American folktale kind of music. And I couldn't remember if he wanted me to write something original from the very beginning or if he wanted to find something, but I wrote something and it's in the movie and that's how it turned out. I wanted something that kind of sounded familiar and yet different at the same time. So if you listen to the first couple lines in the verses, it's very similar to House of the Rising Sun because that's a that's a folk tale, or I mean, not a folk tale. It's a piece of music that most people around the world are familiar with. It, um, it's famous in America, obviously. I think we associate it with New Orleans, but also it's known in other countries around the world as well. And, uh, lots of, if you go online and you search House of the Rising Sun in whatever different language, you can find it in just about any language you can think of because it's that well known. So I wanted a theme, or I wanted a piece of music, a piece of folk music that kind of Sound f sounded familiar and yet slightly different at the same time. If you look at the lyrics for the song, it's obviously referencing, um, well, one way to look at it is you could look at it as that's the witch's story, that, you know, it's a musical version of the witch's story because in the movie, uh, Bellamy or Mary tells, tells the story about a witch who lived long ago, who could have been Mary, could have not been Mary. We don't really know, it's kind of up in the air. So that story is kind of referenced in the lyrics of the, the witch's song that appears in the end credits. And that was kind of the idea to hear, to hear kind of a musical version of that story. So that's what you hear when you're listening to that song, um, those lyrics, that's what it's referring to anyways. And what we had done, well, when we filmed the movie, there was a couple of times on set when we just had some free time just to sit down and um, kind of goof around a little bit. And one of the things we did and when we had some free time was we sat down, I played the guitar, Bellamy played, sung, and we just performed the, the witch's song a couple times through. And that's the version that you hear in the movie. Again, there are other parts in the movie where she was going to sing that song, Mary, that character Mary's going to sing that song to James. However, I think that, you know, you'd have to ask Ethan about why that was rearranged or scrapped or cut or whatever, but I know that he, I, I feel like he was pretty certain that once he recorded that version of the song on set um, that the credits would be a good place to put it. Because I agree, when I was going through the mo movie to score, I couldn't really find a great place to put that song uh, anywhere else in the movie. It kind of musically didn't gel well with everything because everything else was so intertwined. But uh, the bell rings, that, or the witch's song, is a great addition at the end credits. and. I recorded an instrument, an instrumental version of the, the, the Witch's Song, and I also recorded a demo track, which you can actually listen on my Bandcamp account, so if you go to the link in the description, there's a link to a Bandcamp, you'll find um, a demo version of the Bell Rings Witch Song, and you'll also find um, Heaven in a Hurry from uh, our movie Crescendo with the RC boys. But anyways, um, I, I made that demo 
as kind of like a reference for Bellamy to practice when she was singing and, and getting ready for it. But ultimately we ended up using Mary singing, or the character of Mary singing in the end credits because it just felt a little more fitting than if I sung it or kind of a really more produced version of the song. So that's just about it for today. Thank you for watching everyone. We have a playlist of all of our original music on our YouTube channel You can, if you're interested in hearing more soundtracks from us. I'm also planning on uploading the WAV files from the Bell Ring score onto our Patreon. We have a Patreon now if you didn't know. So if you would want to become a, a Patreon of ours, you can go on there, get all those tracks downloaded. If you listen, you know, when you're working out or just going about your day or whatever you want to do. Check out the Bandcamp as well. There's a couple of songs on there. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It only takes a couple minutes out of your day, but it means the world to us. Plus, we promise to put something cool out in return. Thanks again, and I hope you have a good day.